Welcome to Brief Crypto. We review the talk and action around crypto and sum it up. Today is Monday, October 9th, and today's video is for entertainment only. We're going to be looking at the big picture today. And so looking at the markets on CryptoBubbles.com, red day for crypto. We're not going to go through all these percentages, hardly see any green bubbles on the daily. Looking at the top 100 tokens, we're going to go through some of the higher market cap. Bitcoin's down 1.2, XRP's down 2.8, Solana down 4.9. Um, Cardano down 1.9, Stacks down 3.3, uh, Ethereum's down 3.3, BNB's down two and a half, Avalanche down 6.5. And so that's some of the, some of the bigger market cap tokens. So red day for crypto looking at news related to crypto on cryptonewsflash.com. BlackRock exec or previous BlackRock exec. Uh, he now is the, um, uh, CEO of Jacoby Asset Management, so a former BlackRock executive, executive predicts SEC will greenlight all spot Bitcoin ETFs together, leading to a trillion dollar inflow wave for the crypto market. The veteran believes the SEC will try to avoid giving any one firm the first mover advantage. That would be quite something if that happens. So today we're going to be looking at how war obviously is Hamas, uh, Hamas terror, terror attack on Israel occurred over the last few days. We're going to be looking at how that is, how, how the beginning of a war has affected the markets in the past. And, uh, just as a note, um, I personally stand with Israel and condemn the terror attacks on Israel by Hamas. Not a political channel, so that's all I'm going to say about that, but I did have to mention it. So looking at how wars have affected um, the stock market, in this case, the S&P 500 in the past, we're going clear back into the Great Depression and then World War II. And so if we go back, well, let's just look overall at the chart real quick. We have the Kennedy slide. So some big events as well as, as starts of war, the Korean War, the start of the Korean War, Vietnam in November of uh, 55, the six day war in Israel in June of 67, Yom Kippur in May of night of 1973, Kuwait, uh, the Chechen, uh, Afghanistan fighting against the Russians, the Chechen war in December of 94, Iraq and Af Afghanistan right after nine 11, Syria in 2011 and Ukraine in February of 2022. And now the Hamas terror attack. So looking at, um, you know, let's just look at the recent, the recent past, um, not a lot of effect really. You're not seeing a lot of downturn. Um, you know, let's just go ahead and kind of blow in here a little bit, see if we can see better in Kuwait when, uh, uh Iran, um, Iraq invaded Kuwait, not really a whole lot of movement there. The Chechen war, really nothing as far as a pattern. We did get a little drop, um, even down to the 200 week, um, let's see if we blow, but we can't because we're comparing it to gold. Let's just take, uh, uh, so anyway, we did come down almost to the 200 week exponential moving average with Kuwait, but, uh, still just moving up nicely, uh, with the 200 week exponential moving average acting as support for the S and P 500, the Chechen, uh, no, no, uh, down actually started moving up towards the dot com bubble. 9-11 happened, so we were headed down from the dot-com dot bubble burst, and then 9-11, and so we were already heading down here. So we don't know if the Iraq-Afghanistan Afghanistan war uh, brought us down more, or we were just already heading down due to 9-11 and the dot-com. So, um, but we were heading down at the start of the uh, Iraq-Afghanistan wars, and we did continue to head down. That's when the first gold ETF occurred back in shortly after that in 2003, March 2003. And then the first U.S. gold exchange traded fund occurred in November of 2004. And that's when we really see gold. So we've seen a lot of, you know, people talking about how it affects the market, how it affects gold. We see a rotation into gold. Not really seen that. I mean, gold was just, just ticking up pretty much at the same slope until the ETFs hit, it was pretty much down flat here until the ETFs hit, and then it really ramped up. So I would say it was more likely related to the ETFs than any wars. We don't really see much movement back here in the Chechen or Kuwait or further back. We'll go back and look at some of the previous start uh, wars and the start of them. So looking at the Syrian 
uh, war. Um, we were headed up. We did come down a little bit and touch the 200 week simple moving average for the S and P 500 right in that time frame. That's right after we corrected through the subprime mortgage. So really so far we we're seeing that black Monday, that's where we got this, a bigger drop down below the 200 week exponential moving average of the dot com and nine 11 would drop down below it. Subprime mortgage crisis dropped way down below it. COVID dropped down just for a few months. And then Binomics, we've dropped down for a couple of months. So um, really we're not seeing a lot of correlation between war and the stock market increasing or decreasing or gold increasing and decreasing that I can see that's consistent. And going back in time, well, let's just go back in time this way. We go back and look at uh, uh, the 1982 bear market. We dropped down under 200 exponential to Black Monday, just briefly, energy crisis. That's when Yom Kippur was. Um, so the market was heading down due to the energy crisis. We're not sure whether the uh, one, one or the other, I would say more likely the energy crisis, which was you know tied in likely with Yom Kippur and then also the Six Day War. So the 1970s recession was right in that time frame. Kennedy slide dropped us down. Not really seeing much in around Vietnam. If we look at that, let's go ahead and get some of this out of there. So gold was flat going across World War II, the Korean War of Vietnam, the Six Day uh, War, Yom Kippur. Um, stock market's just moving up, mostly above the 200-week exponential moving average. So not seeing any like big correlation between the start of a war and um, drops or rises in the stock market or in the price of gold. I mean, it would just seems to be doing its thing regardless of what goes on there. So we wanted to take a look at that and see if we saw any correlation, any pattern that played out there. And we really don't see it might exist, not financial advice, not a financial advisor to do your own research. But as, as we look at it, we can't see a lot of correlation looking at, um, Bitcoin, as I did that, I uh, found it interesting. I wanted to look at what Bitcoin did compared to gold. And then I came across this Warren Buffett, couple of quotes from him back in 2014, March of 2014, talking about Bitcoin being basically a mirage and he wouldn't be surprised if it's not around in 10 to 20 years. Well, since that time, if we go back to that time, March of 2014, Bitcoin's up, uh, you know, over 4,000% and the Berkshire Hathaway A funds, BRK.A, are up 179. Actually, NASDAQ did better. You could invest it in the Qs. Uh, the Invesco Trust, the QQQ, and you would have been up right around 320 like the NASDAQ. Gold's only up 37% across that time frame. So pretty interesting. Um, and then looking at where we are from, you know, we're, we're roughly six and a half months back from having four. And, um, and uh, so kind of looking at where we are in those time frames moving through the halving, we can see Bitcoin really moved up. Um, not a lot of movement. Well, I don't know. Maybe we can see more movement if we go back here and these others. You really can't. Bitcoin dwarfs the NASDAQ, Berkshire Hathaway A shares, and gold through the having two. And then through having three, we actually do get a little bit more where we can see. Um, so if we go back to the low, having two, the low after, um, well, let's see, the low was back in here. So having two moving into having three for so the peak down to the low. So there's the low right about there. Um, we have, you know, Bitcoin up 651%, NASDAQ up somewhere around 140, Berkshire A shares up around 71 and gold up around 50 from the having two post peak low moving through. So at least we can see a little bit better. It's not completely flat for those, but still Bitcoin seriously outperforming not a lot of movement related to starts starting of wars uh, seems to be still mostly correlated with the Bitcoin having cycle. So we also wanted to go in and look at M2 liquidity, M2 money supply. We you know hear a lot of talk about M2 money supply, uh, the cycle of that going in with the cycle of Bitcoin. And so we wanted to go in and see if we could see any of that. We really didn't see any of that either. I mean, basically we have M2 money supply for China, USA, Japan, the EU, the United Arab Emirates, and Brazil. Um, so China, USA is in light blue. Um, Brazil is in green. The uh, UAE is in this dark purple. The lighter purple is purple's EU and Japan's white. 
you know, we're seeing pretty much a steady incline, some drops down, uh, like in the, um, uh, the, the, uh, UAE right here dropped down back in 2012, but moving into, uh, uh, having one, having one peak and then the 14 months, first 14 month winter we got after, after, uh, having occurred down to the having two post peak low money supply still moving up. And the 35 month summer, first 35 month sun, summer after a having event, having one, and uh, money supplies moving up, price moving up, and then the having two peak right around December 2017. And then we have a tw uh, 12 month winter, the second winter that's basically a year, uh, down to the having two post peak low. Uh, Bitcoin headed down in this time frame over that year, and we still see money flow, flow just kind of steadily moving up. Uh, uh, the UAE is a bit more choppy, but the U.S. is nice, smooth, just moving up. Brazil's pretty smooth, moving up. China's moving up at a much bigger pace. EU's nice and smooth, moving up, and Japan's moving up. This video is probably going to be longer than 20 minutes. I apologize in advance. So then, then, then the next 35 months, um, going from having two post peak low, Bitcoin's moving up to the next having three peak that occurred in November of 21. And, uh, all of them are moving up. And of course, this is 2020, this is COVID where we had a ton of liquidity come in in Brazil and China and the United States, uh, steepest slopes in Brazil and the United States. And we didn't really start flattening off until after the peak. Um, and so this is kind of the first time, but again, looks more like the cycle. We have China, uh, M2 money going up, Brazil, M2 money going up. As we get into the 12 month winter that came after the having three peak down to the having three post peak low in November 21st or of 2022. So basically 12 month winters, third, third year of winter, uh, in a having cycle. So nice and consistent again, as far as the Bitcoin having cycle goes from having three from peak to post peak low from, um, um, and then the summer time frame from the low to the high. 35 months. So a lot of consistency there. Uh, we have seen some flattening off of money flow in the USA, some flattening, flattening off of money of, of M2 liquidity in, uh, the, the UAE, or excuse me, this is, uh, the EU. Um, and then, uh, pretty much Japan and the UAE are moving up still. China's moving up. Brazil's moving up. So, uh, even through, these this downturn so now we're now having through three post peak low we're up about you know we've gone up over 100 percent bitcoin since that time frame we've retraced back some but we're moving into the having four cycle so i'm not seeing a lot of correlation really between liquidity m2 money supply at least just looking at this very simple uh simple look at charts and and how things are moving again not financial advice not a financial advisor so looking at Bitcoin, the, the monthly Bitcoin box chart, logarithmic scale. And again, we're not going to go through all these os oscillators, but everything's looking right on track. The only one we're going to look at is the Bollinger Band. You know, we're right in here in the having four pre having four summer, this 35 months that if we follow these past 35 months of summer, we'll reach a peak in Bitcoin some somewhere in late October of 2025 after the having four event in April, probably about April 26th of 2024. So anyway, the only thing we're going to look at is the Bollinger band still down right around one. And so when we've seen these times down right around one, that's when we've really seen some explosive action in the having two through having two to the peak, uh, for having two through having three COVID was right in here. So we were dropping through having three to the peak and having three. And so if we take away these Bollinger bands, you can see through having two up to the peak, and then through having three, right after having three up to the peak. So um, Bollinger Band looking really good for a potential uh, start of an explosion. And this is the flatter, generally the flatter time frame. But uh, in the past, we've gone up 300% plus in the pre-having and having two and in having three. So far, we're right around 100, 105 that we've reached as far as the maximum from the post-having three, post-peak low to um, the highest point in this pre-having four Time frame. Um, so looking at the pre having time frame, moving into the having, uh, and the fractals from having three and two, having three in orange, having two in yellow. We look at this all the time to see if we're outside. We are outside the fractals. We're below both of them at this point, but, um, still, you know, looking, looking really good. This is actually a much 
healthier bowl movement, stair step movement. We did get the stair step down, but um, that's to be expected with this big move up. It's actually much healthier than in having three where we got this explosive action really quick, 300% plus, and uh, then we're retracing before we came back up. So this is a much health, healthier bow pattern in this pre-having four cycle and still looking good for getting a, a potentially up somewhere around 50,000 by having four around April 26, 2024. Looking at further news on CryptoPotato.com, Ripple XRP might explode alongside Bitcoin and Ethereum, a potential uncertainty in the, in the trad fi sector. Could push people towards the crypto industry, Forbes suggested. U.S. economic downturn could boost crypto, especially Bitcoin, Ripple, and Ethereum. Following legal wins against the U.S. SEC, Ripple's XRP could further benefit from the 2024 trial and potential banking partnerships. And so, um, you know, according to this Forbes, uh, I'm not sure if this was a Forbes article. Yeah, American Business Magazine, Forbes released a recent report. So this is a report in Forbes. Uh, and we'll have links to all these articles down below. So in uh, utoday.com, XRP has recently experienced a significant reduction in its volatility, reaching levels that have not been seen for a considerable period. This decline in volatility combined with the current price behavior suggests that XRP is undergoing a phase of consolidation, potentially setting the stage for significant price movement in the near future. And so if we look at an XRP, and this is a logarithmic scale, we're looking back in time, uh, looking at the point where we're at now and that relative point. So basically, um, you know, seven months, six and a half months back from the Bitcoin having four. So if we go seven and a half months back from Bitcoin having three, um, this is where we'd be seven months back from Bitcoin having two. And so you can, we have, we, you can see we have these similar consolidations downtrending in the case of pre pre Bitcoin having two and the Bollinger band was right down in this area right down in the 0.6, below one anyway. So let's see right there, right about at one right there. And that's when we got this explosive action. We actually had, you didn't even have to hit the bottom, this bottom point in this absolute peak. You know, if you have somewhere in here and somewhere up in here, you had a 200 X, 5,000 turned into a million in the having two cycle and the Bitcoin having three cycle. Um, if you hit somewhere down here around COVID, uh, down here where the, where you, again, you had a Bollinger band down below, uh, 0.62, well, 0.6 down around this 0.6 point, uh, this white dotted line, then, uh, you'd have 15 X and 10 grand would have got you to 150,000. So if nice gain, and what we think that's potential that we could get somewhere around a 10 to 15 X in this cycle, if there is uh, a win which it looks like there's going to be against it, the SEC with Ripple. And that's, that does look like it's going to happen again. Not financial advice, not a financial advisor. Do your own research. But um, looking good right now coming into the Bitcoin having four. And we could still see some more consolidation or even with uh, black swan events. Um, and horrible news like we've had recently with this uh, terrorist attack on Israel. Um, that... Uh, you know, we could get some big drops uh, potentially, but right now everything seems to be holding pretty strong with this news. And we don't tend to see historically a lot of movement around the start of a, of a war that looks like it's directly related to that, like we talked about earlier. So looking again at uh, some of the companies that have applied for a Bitcoin spot ETF, um, you know, going back to that article that talked about all, uh, all of them being approved at once. Well, there's a lot of applications out there and this and this likely is not even a complete list. You should do your own research here as well. But you know, a lot of big players, BlackRock, Invesco, Fidelity, Van Eck, Grayscale, Wisdom Tree, ARK, 21 Shares, Valkyrie, Invesco, Bitwise, First Trust, Stone Ridge, ProFunds, Global X, Direction, BlockFi, Simply, Kryptonian, One River Asset, Advisor Shares, AXS Investments, Will Shire, Phoenix, and I don't even know how to say this. T U T U I don't know how to say that. So anyway, a lot of applications for spot Bitcoin ETFs. They approved all those at once. You could see why potentially you could get a trillion dollar influx into Bitcoin. Obviously not you know, overnight, but uh, over, over a relatively short period of time. So again, not financial advice, which we're going to get into right now. Thank you for joining in today's Brief Crypto. If you like today's video, please subscribe, like, hit the notification bell, and share it with others. Today's video 
is for entertainment and education purposes only. We are not financial advisors. You should always do your own investment research. 